Hey guys, time for another video. Today we're talking about remote collars. All right, this is not an in-depth discussion on remote collars. The purpose of this video is just to show you different models uh, that, we, that we recommend that we use. Again, you need to follow our training progression in order to get to remote collar conditioning. You should not be putting a remote collar on your dog on day one. If you're following a training progression with as much experience with working dogs as we have, it's gonna be at least day seven to 10 in training before we actually start even just wearing it, before we start the actual conditioning process, right? So with that being said, go back, watch our podcast episode, Canine Revolution Radio, episode 19, where we talk in detail about the remote collar and we also discuss our remote collar progression, a remote collar conditioning process in that video, in that podcast. You can listen to it while you're driving, available on all podcast platforms. Today, we're going through a couple models, all right? So again, we use primarily Dogtra remote collar systems, right? Because they're they're the best, all right, in the industry. So with that being said, a couple models here, and I'll tell you why we, why we would use these models, all right? Number one, we got the 1900, right? This is the big boy collar, right? This collar is designed for, it's called a high output collar, but it's designed for dogs that are highly tolerant uh, to remote collar stimulation, all right? So think of a, a very large dog or a very stubborn dog, very independent dog. Those types of dogs would probably need a high output collar. We have the standard contact points on this one, all right? So that's the 1900. You got your standard remote with it where you have uh, different features on it. You got a power button. You got a pager on the front, which is your vibrate. We don't, we don't use a vibrate on your on the side here. You've got a nick button and a continuous. All right, so the nick, that's gonna be your one half second stimulation. Continuous is gonna be your continuous stimulation. You can push and hold it for continual stimulation, or you can push and release that continuous, which is what we call the bump. All right, so that's the 1900. <clears throat> now we've got our most highly used, highly recommended remote collar model for, for most dogs, the Dogtra Arc hands-free. The reason why we like the hands-free is because it does come with a separate hands-free device that's much smaller than the remote, which you can use pretty much anywhere, all right? Makes it super convenient to use that remote collar in a variety of situations, all right? But this is the Arc hands-free. The, the remote on this one is identical to the remote on the 1900. So you got power button, pager, which is your vibration, your nick at the top, which is your one half second. That's like a tap on the shoulder to the dog. When trained properly, you've got your continuous or if you push and hold it, it's gonna provide continuous stimulation or push and release that continuous, it's gonna bump, which is what we use for our standard correction. Then you got your stimulation adjustment knob up here at the top to change your stimulation levels, all right? So again, dog to arc hands free. On this one, we've got the comfort pad. Uh, that's for short or short haired dogs or dogs with sensitive skin. We'll talk about uh, contact points here in a minute, okay? That's the ARC hands-free. Now we've got the ARC two dog system. ARC two dog system, so this is what you're gonna use if you have two dogs. The pros to this one, you got two dogs, one handler. That handler, would, it'd be easy on that person if they had a remote that they could communicate with both dogs with, right? If you have two handlers and two dogs or each handler has their own dog, I would not recommend this system because you've only got one remote. I would go back and get two ARCs, right? One for each handler and dog team, all right? So you got the ARC two dog system here, orange collar for the orange buttons, black collar for the gray buttons. <clears throat> only difference is here, instead of having nick and continuous on the side, you've got a switch on the front that details whether you're on the nick feature or the continuous feature. So for the most part, what we recommend, keep it on the continuous feature or that C, flip that switch down. And then for your correction, no, you're gonna say no. And then you're gonna bump by pushing and releasing the side buttons. These front buttons are pagers. Again, vibration, we don't use that. Power buttons in the same place. Stimulation level knob, same place. The only difference is this switch right here dictates what's, what these buttons are outputting, all right? So again, we recommend keeping that to C or continuous. If your dog does something wrong, when they know what they're supposed to be doing, no, push and release, that's bumping it, good to go, all right? Then we've got the IQ Plus. IQ Plus system would be used for small dogs or dogs that might be more sensitive, all right? So this is also a two dog system, right? Or it can be a one dog system, okay? 
The way that you switch between collars is you got a little switch up here at the top that says one and two. The number one on the left side of the switch is the black collar. Number two, switch it to the right, that's the orange collar, all right? So with that being said, a little bit different button layout on this one. You've got P, C, N. P stands for pager or vibration. Again, we're not using that. N stands for nick. That's that one half second, basically tap on the shoulder to the dog when conditioned properly. C is that continuous, where if you push and hold it, it's gonna provide that continuous stimulation. If you bump it, you push and release it, that provides that standard correction, that bump, all right? So that's the way you use the IQ Plus. Again, this is for sensitive dogs or smaller dogs, all right? With that being said, let me just show you real quick where that light is, is the level that you're at. So the level, the stimulation level dial is a little bit different on this one than it is on the arcs. So if you see where that light's at, that's the level that you're at. So right now we're at level 20, go up to level 40, or down to level zero, or anywhere in between. All right, so that's how you use IQ+. Plus. There's a couple other models that we have recommended before, but they're not standard. These are our standard models. You've got the IQ Mini, which the remote is the same as the IQ+, Plus, but the, the actual collar is much, much smaller. The contact points, you cannot change out. You can change all these contact points. We'll talk about that in a second. IQ Mini for very small dogs, all right? And then you've got uh, like an Edge, which is a four dog system. If you've got four dogs, you can have a collar on each one controlled by one remote, all right? You've also got a 280C. A 280C is basically an IQ uh, collar with an ARC remote. So that's convenient for some people, all right? So that would be used for like sensitive dogs, all right? So that's the basics on the different models that we recommend. Um, again, you know, you're gonna pick one out that's best for your dog. You're also gonna pick contact points that are best for your dog. With that being said, again, go through the conditioning process, go through the progression, don't rush this, all right? So a couple contact point options. You've obviously got standard contact points, which come with your collar if you buy it from Dogtra. It comes with these right here, standard contact points. These can be taken off, right? And swapped out with other contact points just simply by unscrewing, screwing it on, okay? So a couple options, you got the Dogtra Titanium Comfort Pad. Looks just like that. It comes with all the tools you need. Again, you're gonna be using that for short-haired or sensitive dogs. So think about Doberman, uh, Pitbull, dogs like that, or even like a thin-haired Shepherd. There are some thin-haired shepherds out there. You could put that on them, right? Reduce any type of irritation. Now, with that being said, <coughs> using the comfort pad is going to actually reduce your remote collar's output. So if you were on a level 20 on standard contact points and you throw one of these on there, you might be at level 25 or somewhere around there. So just keep that in mind, okay? Then you've got your enhanced contact points. You've got regular size ones and large ones. They've got these wings on them. These wings are very flexible. I'm gonna break one of these out so I can demonstrate that. But these are gonna be used for uh, long-haired dogs or dogs that the standard contact points don't work with, all right? So the key here is you put this on the collar, okay? So you're gonna screw it in like that. The good part is these wings, they, they move, right? They're a little bit flexible. That's good because they're going to allow you to appropriately tighten this down on the dog's neck. These will flex a little bit to the dog's neck. As the dog's moving, they're gonna flex to seek to make proper contact with the dog. In addition, uh, you know, if it's summertime and you start off in the morning, it's not that hot outside. By the time it's evening, your dog's neck may have expanded just because of blood flow moving throughout the neck. So these will move with the dog's neck as your dog's neck expands therefore reducing any potential types of irritation that your dog could get from those, okay? So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions on that, drop us a comment below, right? We can make more videos that detail that out in the future. Now I'm gonna show you how you would put this on, right? So we've got the dog to arc hands-free. The way that you turn these on, let me just demonstrate real quick. The way you turn these on, you've got a red dot on the collar, red dot on the remote simply hold them over each other. You see the green light come on the collar, that means the, the collar is on. You push this blue button on the side, that means the remote is on, right? So you can page it just to test it or you can stimulate just to test it, okay? So we know it's working. Bang, come here. 
So whenever you put it on your dog's neck, you do want to put it on the side of your dog's neck, not right on a trachea or anything like that. So notice how I take the collar, I place it up against his neck. I tighten down my band right here. So you see, I, I want it nice and snug up against his neck. I don't want it hanging off of his neck. I want it nice and snug. If I move the collar like this, it should be able to stay right where it's at. What you don't want is you don't want it loose to where you can pull it off. And then if you rotate it, see how it's rotating all around his neck? That could create some irritation, all right? So we want to reduce irritation as much as possible. So we tighten it to where if we move the box, it's staying right there, right? We can go ahead and secure it to his neck. We put it on the side of his neck. And then on the opposite side of his neck, we come over here. We wanna be able to get at least two fingers through. Two fingers through, that's what we're looking for over here. And then over here, right? We wanna just stay in right in that spot. So what I do personally, I always keep the buckle on top of the neck. Now today I might have it on this side of his neck. Tomorrow, I might switch it to the other side. So again, I'll take the box. I'll place it right here. Okay, I'll place it right here on his neck. Go ahead and buckle it. I do what I call my initial tightening. When I come over here, I check the box, see if it moves excessively, see if I can pull it off his skin, which I can't do. So now I just loop it, make sure I can get two fingers through. Actually, now that I'm doing this, it feels a little bit loose. Let me tighten it down one more. Okay, make sure I can move this right here and it stays right there. Still get two fingers through here. Good to go, okay? So that's how we're gonna place a remote collar on the dog's neck. What I do a lot of times, it comes with a clip. You put the clip on the back, just clip it to my pocket. Now we're ready to go, okay? The remote collar is gonna give you and your dog freedom. It's gonna give you and your dog a new line of communication when trained and taught properly. So keep all that in mind as you're uh, looking at using remote collars. You should not be using it on day one, right? Of training with your dog. Follow the proper training progression. Go through the proper conditioning process. Good to go. If you guys have any questions, if you appreciate this information, definitely drop us a comment below. We really appreciate that. We try to get back to everybody. And then if someone asks for a special video, we try to make that, all right? But until the next video, out.